And we're back again. Andrew Capone from Who's Got the Action, Caleb Knight from Taking a Stand. We're going to be talking about the El Camino Real here. Uh, the El Camino Real, some people call it the Forgotten Derby Prep Race. Uh, it's our one West Coast Simp Prep Race. Uh, produced last year's Preakness and third place Belmont finisher, Ron Brower. Uh, it has a nice field of 10 here. I'm excited to talk about it. I, I love a price. It's going to be both my favorite and long shot here. Um, so this is definitely a race that, that interests me a lot uh, from a betting perspective. Um, starting off on the rail here, uh, Stormy Samurai. Horse has been working well. It's a hop, skip, and a jump too far for this horse, in my opinion. Coming from the allowance company, it's been holding to a field that figures to have much higher numbers. Um, first race around two turns coming from the rail. Uh, I'll let this horse beat me. One point of note, though, Steiner is a good uh, picking his spots when he is stretching out. This trainer is one of the higher uh, sprinter route trainers out there. Um, so maybe he's not as worried as much as I am. 32% on, on that stat. Uh, Who you, would you like about the three and four, here? two and three here, Caleb? Yeah, the number two McKinnon is a pretty heavy morning line favorite. And uh, I think that's a completely accurate representation of where this horse is going to be. Uh, McKinnon is just he's been facing horses that are significantly more talented than what he's running into in this field. He owns the best piece of form in this entire race with that Breeders cup juvenile turf where he tried to close from the clouds and uh, almost only beaten about the length and three quarters by modern games, you know, an excellent good dolphin shipper for Charles Appleby and tis the bomb. Who's another very highly regarded U uh, S turf horse. He handles the dirt. He handles the turf. It stands to reason he should handle the synthetic. And I think he's pretty much the horse to beat in this spot. The number three, Unraptured. This is a long shot here that I'm I'm pretty interested in, to be honest. He's undefeated over the synthetic and it was only a half a length from being undefeated in all three of his starts where he just couldn't quite get there in that turf sprint. Uh, this is a horse that you know, there are some perhaps distance questions, but he uh, did have a big race last time out, going a mile. Granted, that was a three-horse field, so it remains to be seen just how proven that form is going to come back. But this is a horse that I think is very interesting and has some very hot connections right now with Tim McKenna and uh, Armando Ayuso. So next we get up to the Baffert Invader. So what do you think of Black Adder? So before I touch on that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the bias uh, here at, at Golden Gate Fields. It's something that's pretty impressive. Um, we're going to look at the routes here going uh, on the all-weather. Uh, only at the last 24 races, only one horse has been off more than four lengths at the at first call. So it's definitely one of the most speed-heavy tracks that I've seen. Um, usually does pretty well for Bafferts. So that's something that, that his horses tend to be really good at, is getting to the front and then keep on going. Um, as I always like to say, he has the best hay and oats out there. Um, looking at, at the four-year black ladder, another prep, another Baffert horse, um, another horse that can't receive points for the Derby. Uh, horse work tab has been amazing, as you can expect with Bab. Bob. Uh, figures put it right in the top of the field. The 7-1 to morning line honestly seems high to me. I'd be very, very surprised if this horse is in favorite or co-favorite um, when the gate pops. This is a horse that, that's very, very talented. Uh, I'm just personally not going to be playing the Bobs uh, for most of the Derby preps. Moving to the 5, Nuestra Grito, uh, the local horse in the race. Uh, although the figures keep on improving on this horse um, and the last almost fits here, I think the first time going two turns and the field is just way too much over his head. Uh, it's a, it's a local horse. I wish them the luck, a one K purchase here, but uh, this horse is going to be a, a clear toss for me. Uh, what'd you think of the six and seven? Yeah. The number six Boise, I think is an interesting horse in this race. Uh, this is a horse that I definitely could see making some noise and winning this race, but I do think I would need a better price than the you know, nine to two ish that he's been put in as the morning line. Uh, it's Jonathan Wong at Golden Gate Fields, you know, always dangerous. He's you know, apparently one of their top trainers every single year. Uh, this horse does have two wins from two starts at Golden Gate, you know, one on the synthetic and one on the turf. But both times when he tried to step up and face some slightly better company at Del Mar and Santa Anita, he wasn't really able to land a blow, especially in that Eddie Logan last out. So. This is a horse that I wouldn't talk anybody off of, but I would need a better price than I think I'm likely to get. So that's not going to make me too interested in uh, going to Boise. The number seven, Dr. Piscato, is more of an interesting horse here, I think, at a pretty generous price. I think he's about 15 to one on the morning line here. And this is another horse that seems to be uh, one of the more local contenders, but certainly not without a chance in this spot. 
he's coming into this race off somewhat of a, an every other race kind of a pattern where he you know, runs a good race and he backs up a little bit. So looking at that, he seems like a horse that should be sitting on a good race. Uh, he's freshened up a little off of that gold rush stakes where I thought that was pretty interesting that he showed he's not a one dimensional speed horse. And he actually closed from next to last to uh, get all the way up to third. I don't imagine that'll be the game plan for him uh, to, on Saturday, but I think that if he can sit closer, but not be necessarily on the lead, that he has a surprising chance to at least get a minor award. What do you think of number eight, Meet Me at the Club? Um, so great name for a horse, Meet Me at the Club. Um, um, nope. I don't know. I don't know what this horse is doing here. Um, two turns is going to be a too much. 100 to 1. Uh, I probably wouldn't bet this horse. Uh, I don't know what the horse is doing here. I, I don't know what the connections are thinking. Um, this could just be one of those local things where they're taking a shot at it. Um, I'd probably just talk this horse into the winner's circle, and he wins by, fe by five with uh, in hand. But the, the numbers don't fit. He's stretching from five and a half to something that I don't think he can get. Um, this horse isn't even working well to, to, to impress anybody on the work tab. So it's definitely going to be a, a pass for me. Um, the nine horse interests me a little bit. Come on, man. A horse that looks to fit the figures here. Um, running style, as, as, I, as I mentioned before, look at it. It's just been all speed, 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 speed on those routes at, at uh, Golden Gate Fields. Um, it's going to be against that he's going to be way off your screen coming in flying late. Uh, came back to the synth after a rough go on the turf in Southern California. Uh, Bill McLean strikes at 33% when moving from turf to synth. Uh, so a little bit interesting there. Maybe he, he made the mistakes and he's bringing it back. Could be a nice price here. The running style is definitely going to be an issue. But this is a horse, again, like I said, in the Tampa Bay coverage. You know, somebody I'd use underneath. I think this horse is going to be passing tiring horses at the end. Um, and maybe he'll run up into your try or your exacta. Uh, what do you think of – Closing out the field here. Yeah, the last two we have um, I I Bellator or LL Bellator. Uh, they look the same to me. And then uh, Del Mo. And to me, these horses look similar to each other. And I, I do have an interest in both of them. I probably do have a preference to the number ten uh, I, I Bellator. So this is a horse that has slightly to gradually step forward in each career start. That's always something I like to see. These three-year-olds that should be improving with each start. Uh, they're young horses. They're still developing, still maturing. And this is a horse that has come in, and he hasn't had any huge jumps forward, which suggests a pretty healthy development pattern. But I think that he has been gradually improving. Um, as soon as they stretched him out to a route last time, it seems like that made the difference, where he went from kind of settling for second and third to being a pretty clear winner by over two lengths. Uh, the horse that he beat in that field was actually the number 11, Del Mo. Uh, Del Mo uh, had a clean trip that day and just was second best. Uh, he came back about a month ago and stumbled out of the gate, but circled the field and just blew the doors off of a maiden field at Golden Gate back on January 9th. Uh, that race was fairly productive as the second place horse came back to win next out. So this is another horse that I think is interesting. Uh, I do probably prefer... Bellator a little bit, just given the fact I think he can be a little more forwardly placed. And I don't see a ton of speed in this race, but both of these horses, I think, are uh, with a decent chance in this race, especially to run, you know, second or third. Uh, it's a great field of 11. It should be a good, interesting race. Uh, my pick here is going to be interesting. It's going to be both my pick and my long shot. Um, I wouldn't pick a Baffert, uh, and I hope Boise takes a lot of money. Um, my top pick is going to be Dr. Pescado here. Horses is, is very interesting. Post position, running style, everything lines up. Uh, needs to use his speed that he's shown before and get to that 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 front running position like it liked, maybe outside, one or two back. Uh, missed the break last time out, but really showed that versatility to come up and finish in third. Horse can win from all over the uh, – win or – place from all over the place from everywhere so i'm really interested to see how it, it, it works out especially with the other with the baffer boise and, and the other such taking so much money um the figures need to improve a little bit but the the running style and replays have really shown me that this horse has hard it can win from anywhere the jockey trainer combos at 25 percent right now i'm super excited about this pit pick i like to see the little barn action here um 15 to 1 on the morning line i'm going to use this as both my pick and my long shot and i also be using it everywhere in my verticals who did you like for your pick and your long shot yeah it's an interesting pick i, I definitely respect you uh taking a swing here these golden gate you know el camino real is always a fun race you, you get some some local horses where this is their super bowl and some other horses just looking to get triple crown points so 
Always a fun race. I am unfortunately being a chalk eating weasel today. I'm going with McKinnon. I just think he's by far the class of his field. And I'm not sold on the Baffert winning that race. Uh, washed off the turf. His prior two starts on dirt were nothing to write home about. So I'm just not really sure there was anything behind him in that field except for some turf horses that uh, you know weren't on the right surface. So I hope the Baffert takes money. I think McKinnon is by far the horse to beat. And, uh, you know, I hope that I can get, you know, eight to five or nine to five on that horse would be more than fair for me. Um, he lost a new Grange on the dirt last time who came back to you know, crush that Oaklawn prep in the Southwest. So I think this is uh, by far the horse to beat. As far as long shots go, since your pick was your long shot, I'm going to go ahead and take two. <laughs> um, I do like uh, II Bellator, the number 10 that we talked about. Um, this is a horse that I think is going the right way in his form cycle. Jose Batista is actually excellent with last out maiden winners. He's 30% from, from 20 starters with a positive 54 cent ROI on a $2 win bet there. So this is a horse that, uh, you know, a trainer who spots his horse as well and a horse that seems to be peaking. Um, looking at the pedigree, I'm not sure this horse would want a mile in a 16th, but given the way he drew off at a mile, I tend to think that he does have a, a reasonable chance to get this distance. He is triple crown nominated. So there were some expectations at some point for this horse. And I just tend to think he's going to get a better trip and get first run on a lot of the other horses that are likely to take money. The other horse I liked as a price here was the number three unraptured. Uh, again, I don't know what to make of that three horse field last out, but his figures do sort of fit. And I think that uh, this is a horse that should be running on pretty hard late. Uh, he, he got the distance last time out. And again, these connections are extremely hot. Uh, just in the last month alone, uh, Ayuso riding for Tim McKenna is six for seven, so 71%. And I, I think this is the, the local horse that I'm probably the most interested in. Well, thanks for your pick. We have a phenomenal field here of 11 for the El Camino Real Derby. We're going uh, one and one eighth of a mile on the synthetic at Golden Gate Fields. Uh, good, nice Saturday afternoon race. Uh, please like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with some step up as we get to the higher derby, derby prep races. Thank you.